Good, good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John Baptist Church on this blessed day. Now we will have prayer by Brother Kurt, Curtis Lasseter. Heavenly Father, I pray for you to heal us, strengthen us, and guide us around the world. I ask you to be seeable to the blind, hearable to the deaf. I ask you to cure the St. Baptist Church members and help Curtis Lasseter the first with dialysis and others with dialysis. I ask you to burn our sins away, and I ask you to make a wonderful day for the fathers. I ask you to help the dads and rest them, and I ask to help us keep our word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Through Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Announcement. Announcements will be from Sister Stoutingberg. Good morning and happy Father's Day. Today we will be celebrating our 2022 graduates. Our worship leader for this service will be Reverend Doretta Hill, and our speaker for this service will be Reverend Carlin Lassiter. Please join us in celebrating our graduates. We have three listed. Uh, the committee will read them and tell us a little about them. For next Sunday, June 26th, our worship leader will be Reverend Carlin Lassiter, and our speaker for the day will be Evangelist Josephine Dixon. Please pray for the King and the Johnson and the Lee families as they lay their loved one, Yolanda Faith Johnson, to rest. Services are entrusted and homegoing services will be held at the funeral home, which is Whiting's, on Friday, June 24th at 11 a.m. Also, please pray for the family of our own Ken Jackson, who passed this week. Please continue to pray for our sick and shut-in and our bereaved families. Send a card, make a visit, do the things that St. John members always do. We will also have a presentation from the Women's Fellowship Committee. They will honor our nonagenarian men today. This concludes your announcements. Deacon Payne will now clear COVID protocol. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. We have to continue our protocols, our COVID protocols, in order for us to be here, continue to be here healthy, and to let everyone know that we are concerned. We're not taking this lightly. This is nothing that um, we're playing with or 
um, putting to the side. We have to continue being vigilant uh, with keeping up what we're supposed to be doing to avoid getting this virus. Uh, the pandemic is still here. We want to thank everyone for your continued support of the protocols that have remained in place to keep us safe from this COVID pandemic. The protocols and the grace of God have allowed us to continue in-person worship services. Fortunately, the virus is not as deadly or requiring the high rate of hospitalizations that occurred in the past. Still, the rate of infection for this new variant is increasing throughout the nation, and we must remain vigilant. Please get your vaccinations, including boosters. And now you can get uh, two boosters uh, in addition to the two shots that you've already had. Um, according to current data, an alarming 90% of hospitalizations for COVID are unvaccinated individuals. So we know that the vaccinations are keeping people out of the hospital and saving lives. While attending service, wear your mask properly, and you'll see the people up here not wearing a mask, just so that we can be heard clearly. Um, with your mouth and nose completely covered throughout the time you are in church. At present, we are utilizing every other pew. We will have six persons to a pew with exceptions to families who are given more space. St. John Baptist Church is large enough for everyone and we welcome you. We know that this has been a challenging time as we do not get to greet each other in fellowship the way to which we are accustomed. With the pleasant outside weather conditions, we ask that you allow the ushers to direct everyone to the proper exits. And that's this side going out the back there and this side going out the side here. There are orphan basket um, in the lobby and there'll be an orphan basket up here as you exit. And we ask that you not linger in the sanctuary, but that you exit as soon as the service is over. Um, this will allow for more open gatherings in the parking lot and lower the risk for infection within the church. Again, we thank you for your obedience and protecting others as well as yourselves. Thank you. Now, a song will be sang by the music industry and the scripture will be read by Brother Amari Parker.
Good morning, church. We are going to be reading chap John chapter 14, verse 5 through 14. No, we do not know the Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, can, no one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who the Father is. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and not yet you don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak, the words I speak are not my own, but the Father who lives in me does the work through me. Just Believe that I'm the Father and the Father is me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works will be because I'm going to be with the Father. You, you can ask anything in my name, and so I will do it, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me anything in my name, and so I will do it. Amen. We will have the presentation of graduates by Mrs. Bay Ms. Baytop, and scholarships will be announced by Mrs. Tamika Lassiter. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to take time to recognize our graduates for 2022 of high school and higher education. When I call your name, if you're here, you can just stand where you are to be recognized. Our first graduate is Alea Sanders. She is the daughter of Michael and Alicia Sanders and granddaughter of trustee Ernest and sister Sister Glendora James, also Reverend Dr. Karen Wells of Little Zion and Mr. Michael Sanders, Sr. Alea graduated magna cum laude on May 22nd from Woodland High School in Stockbridge, Georgia, where she achieved academic excellence, was a food science pathway completer, a member of the National Honor Society, and received the Leader of the Pack Award twice, chosen among all the students in her senior class. Alea plans to attend Fort Valley State University, which is an HBCU. Her favorite scripture is Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvelous. Our second graduate is Rasan Peters. He graduated in June from Bruton High School. He is the son of Minister James Marsh and Sister Dorinda Marsh. Amen. Our next graduate is Jasmine Johnson. She is the daughter of Alfred Johnson Jr. and Leah Washington and the granddaughter of Alfred and Patricia Johnson and Howard and Barbara Washington. Jasmine graduated May 14th from Christopher Newport University, earning a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and an Associate's Degree in Biology. She has been accepted as a 2022 
2023 Winston-Salem Fellow, a faith-based leadership and development program through which she will study graduate level theology and discipleship while beginning a career in her field. Jasmine's favorite, Jasmine's favorite scripture is 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. A fourth graduate is Reverend Dr. James Graves, the husband of Terry Graves. He graduated June 4th from North Carolina College of Theology with a doctorate of theology. He is also a doctoral candidate at Walden University and expects to receive his doctorate of purchase policy this fall. An associate minister at St. John, he is a teacher in the career technology education department at Denby High School, where he is the lead teacher for the ninth grade transition team. One of his favorite scriptures is 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And St. John, those are your 2022 graduates. Praise God. Good morning, St. John. I would like to say congratulations to all of our graduates. Even if you graduated from the diaper pot all the way up until um, postgraduate studies, we congratulate you all. We also want to say Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers uh, and our father figures. Amen. To say all that is a graduate has to have support. And without that support, whether it be financially or if it's just a phone call, that is the support that we all need, especially our graduates, to continue in life and in school and in everything that they do. And as the chairperson of the uh, scholarship committee, St. John, as a church, as a whole, we are able to financially help our high school students who are going into either a two-year program or a four-year college program, vocational program, or a technical program, all the way up until they uh, graduate. And so we also have our James and Geraldine Payne Scholarship, as well as the Hayward Book Scholarship. I would like to present the scholarship for the James and Geraldine Payne Scholarship to Mr. Matthew Lewis. Stand up and wave, Matthew. And our Haywood Book Scholarship will go to Miss Jasmine Johnson. Yes. And so I want to just say thank you so much, St. John, for giving to our scholarship fund. We ask that you continue to give. Um, to our students, to our future, um, especially at this church. And um, happy Father's Day and congratulations.
Can you hear me? We certainly want to thank God for this special day. We certainly want to bless God for allowing the spirit of goodness, the spirit of joy, the spirit of happiness 
to be in this place. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. We must realize that it was the Lord that brought us to this place. As we look on what happened yesterday in the celebration of June 19, we realize that we as a people serve a God who is a loving God, who has always had our back through thick and thin. Even when we thought we couldn't make it, God has been there for us. Amen. Amen. You know, on this evening, it was just so good to, this morning, it was just so good to see our young people. Yeah. To see them being reared and trained in the church, religiously educated in the church. To be able to stand bold before God's people and this church and do the work that God has put in their heart. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, young people, for this, this worship service. We want to thank you, Casey and Trey and Amari, for what you did. And I don't want you to take it lightly. But what you did, you did it in excellence. You did it in excellence. Amen. Amen. And we certainly want to thank all the deacons, trustees, and St. John at, at large for all that you do. Uh, even yesterday, there was uh, the women of the church. They, they, they fed the men of the church and gave us honor and gave us our flowers <laughs> by way of our stomachs. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To those that are, have graduated here and those that are online that are listening who have graduated this year, God is good. God has been with you. I knew that there were some troubling times when studying and, and trying to gather the energy and having to push away from some fun and from what others may want to do around you because you had to get that paper and you had to study for that test or that exam. I want you to know that if, if it hadn't been for the Lord, if it hadn't been for the Lord that was in the minds and hearts of those that supported you, if it had not been for the Lord, where would you be? Amen. Look on the news, where would you be? Amen. Where would you be? For those that received the scholarship, Brother Matthew, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> the work that you have done, you're well deserving of it. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord tonight. And that word that's coming from the Lord comes from the Gospel of John. The words were already read this morning. It was Gospel, the Gospel of John, 14th chapter, verses 5 through 14. And the brother did such a good job. I'm only going to lift up just a few of those verses. If you are able, we would just ask you to stand to your feet. I'll be reading from the New International Version of this text. The text reads, Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Pray with me. Everlasting and almighty God, we now become before you 
and your presence. We come before you, Lord God, because we realize that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the creator, the sustainer, and the example, the teacher, the groomsman of our faith. You are the one that allowed us to be in these doors today. It was because of you, Lord God, that we are able to come as a people and congratulate, worship you, praise with you, glorify your name on the highest. It is because you are worthy of that praise. As we come before you now, Lord, we come humbly, Lord God, recognizing, Lord God, that on this pilgrim's journey that we're walking in this world, that we are still learning about your precepts and your principles. Lord God, we have not done all that you have told us to do. We have not done all that your spirit has urged us to do. Yet, Lord God, we come before you and ask for forgiveness. We ask your spirit to continue to guide us, comfort us, and show us the things that are pleasing to you. We ask, Lord God, that as, as we are in these walls, that you will give us that sanctified dwelling place where your spirit not only is in a building, but it touches each and every one of us right there on the inside of our hearts and minds. Nourish us, Lord God, with your word. Allow our young people to hear your word and spread your word, spread your seed, and cultivate and grow and drop seeds of life so that something may grow in the hearts and minds of their families and their community. We ask, Lord God, that as we come before you, that you will remove this speaker, that you will remove this vessel and allow only your truth to come out. Humble me, Lord God. Allow not your preacher to take what you have in vain. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. You are our strength. And you are our redeemer. In the precious and holy name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We certainly want to thank all those that have labored and have had late calls and have had many conversations bringing on this service today. Those that prepared and those that, that went through applications and those that came to serve this church and be able to get this program going. So we just want to thank you. Amen. I won't be before you long, young people. Before a moment that I have, I want to teach and preach on the subject, even greater, even greater. Young people, one of my favorite quotes from the movie Lion King is when Simba returns to the pride lands where he was reared and where he was raised. This quote or this statement that was said by Simba was after his time with Timon and Pumbaa in the jungle. This coming back home or this return wasn't just to reclaim his status or to just simply return to his friends and family. This particular return was a moment for him to recover. This particular movement in his life was to regain and to reunite with his authentic and distinctive identity as Simba. This identity in which he abandoned and walked out on was after his death, the death of his father. Simba, after returning home, once realized again, and this is the statement that he said, he said, I am Simba, the son of Mufasa. Here it is, Jasmine, that Simba learned through his chats with Rafiki, 
that he needed to accept who he was and honor his father proudly by taking back his name, taking back his kingdom from his uncle Scar and those evil hyenas. Oftentimes, we strive to be great in a world that has defined great. They have defined great as eminence or importance, distinguished or famous, illustrious or celebrated, and perhaps even superior or untouchable. My beloved, here it is. It has been said that to be great in a country such as ours is to be greater than your neighbors or perhaps greater or better than your brothers and sisters. To be great, Simba went through great harm and danger trying to forget the words of his father. To be great, many of us have lost our minds trying to look like, trying to be like, trying to act like, trying to spend money like, or even perhaps trying to talk like someone else who was wearing a mask themselves. The old folk used to say that these are the blind trying to lead the blind. However, however, my beloved, striving to be great, trying to walk, trying to talk, or trying to follow the lead of another is not always a bad thing. There's oftentimes tension and language and words that have to fight each other. Especially if you know and follow a God who will make it you to lie down in green pastures, who will lead it you beside the still waters, who will restore your soul and lead it you in the path of righteousness in his name's sake. It's not always bad trying to act like one if it is the one. If it is the one that will lead you in safety, if it is the one that will guard your mind and give you peace, if it's the one that will protect you from the dangers of this world, if it's the one that will restore you back to your authentic and distinctive identity in the Father. Is there anyone in the house this morning that can testify that you know this Jesus in this text read this morning by our mind? Is there anyone in the house this morning who has been lost, but now you are fine? Is there anyone in the house this morning who has lost your mind, who has lost sight of hope, lost sight of who you are, and God picked you up and restored you, and God picked you up and reassured you, and God picked you up and reminded you that your God created you in his inmost being. That this God knitted you together in your mother's womb and reminded you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made because his works were wonderful. There's good news in the Gospel of John this morning. For Jesus showed us how to be great in God's eyes. Jesus showed us how to follow in verse Five, when Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered simply, I am the way. I am the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him. You do know him and have seen him. And Jesus was saying, because you've seen me. This Jesus wasn't following the ways of a world that defined great as having eminence or importance, distinguished or famous, illustrious or celebrated, and perhaps superior or untouchable. This Jesus, the one who has power in all his hands, the one who woke up Lazarus from a dead state to a living state. The one who changed water into wine. The one that healed the paralytic at the pool of Bethesda. The one who gave sight to the blind. The one 
who even walked on water. And with all those great things, and with all those miracles, with all the things he's done for us, for all the credit that Jesus at this time could take and use as even a weapon. This Jesus who did all these powerful things, this great and powerful man named Jesus, he didn't go around bragging. This Jesus, this Jesus, this Jesus didn't go around boosting. This Jesus didn't bottle up his knowledge, didn't bottle up what he had to offer, didn't bottle up his resources and then store them away so that he could have something only for himself one day. This Jesus said to his disciples in the text, and he says it to us this morning, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. This Jesus with all his power, young people, this Jesus with everything that he could do, this Jesus even said that they will do greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Can somebody understand how powerful this is? Can somebody understand when you have those around you that may not be looking out for the good of you? Have you ever had somebody who was trying to be in competition with you? Have you ever had somebody in school who you knew that you had, that you could work with, that you could study with, but they didn't want to work with you because they only wanted it for themselves? But the question I raised from the text today, graduates, the test, the question that I raised today for us fathers, and happy Father's Day to every one of us. Happy Father's Day for every one of us. But the question is, what does greatness look like? How do we display godly greatness to our children and to those under our care? My beloved, I would, I would suggest that in order to align ourselves with true greatness, we must start by redefining the word great. Let me say that one more time. We must start by redefining the word great. And if I can pause parenthetically with this thought, we, St. John, we, people of this community, we, African-Americans of this community, we must take back our words. We must redefine what the enemy uses for their own gain and put it back in the hands of God. If you look in our history, if you look in our history books, if you're staying tuned in to how they want us to not educate our own, they want to use their own language. They want to use their own history for their gain, for a sordid gain. But they also kind of keep their foot on the necks of those that they need. So when you start talking about redefining words, my sister told me last night that you sometimes create a framework. And as you create a framework, if someone creates a framework on a foundation that has no good basis, then everybody that learns in that way will crumble right along with that, that structure. But if you create a strong framework, if you have strong definitions of words and language, if you reclaim that to how your God looks in the Bible, how your eyes sees a God through your experience, then you would understand what it looks like when you say great. Yeah. You would understand what it feels like when you're around a woman or man of God who is displaying greatness. Yeah. If we look closer at the text, Thomas was asking Jesus, and I suggest that Thomas was trying to understand what the parables 
and what the language of Jesus was actually trying to say. He was trying to ask Jesus, what about the way? And Jesus was explaining who the way is. This Thomas in the text perhaps might have even thought that the way may have been on a map. Maybe or perhaps the way was on its way. Or maybe the way will only be revealed when we meet face to face with God in that great getting up morning on that day of judgment. Kenny taught us the way in Boy Scouts using a compass. He taught us by first teaching us that no matter where we stand in the world, the compass will always point toward the North Pole due to the magnetic field. Although we were learning the tools of navigation, by and by, as we continue to grow in the word, we realize that these tools were helping align us back to the moral path. The compass taught us that no matter where we stand in the world, no matter how bad we must have messed up, no matter how far in the streets we may have found ourselves, no matter how life, how hard life got for us, no matter how hard life got for us and how we may have even hurt people, we can always get back on track by realigning ourselves with the Most High God. My beloved, the world in which we live in doesn't show us a God of grace. The world that we live in doesn't always show us a God of compassion or a God of justice. When our children don't see the intentionality and the humility in our pursuit of happiness. Let me say this one more time. When our children don't feel and they don't see the intentionality and the humility of us in our pursuit of happiness, this is what happens. When they don't see that, then we are creating an image of the Father that accepts the way of this world and not the way of God's true design of humankind. <laughs> young people, young graduates, when you do what you do and you get all your successes, you're creating a framework. You're creating a model for those that are coming behind you. As I come to a close, I wanna just go back to the text. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Amen. Jesus said, how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? Someone this morning may ask, how can I see the Father? And how can I see God working in my life? And I'm glad you asked, church. Many of us can see God in our lives when we were taken from our homeland and packed in slave ships crossing the transatlantic waters, yet we are still here. Many of us, many of us can see the Father in our lives when we fed each other with one proverbial loaf of bread, when we had no food or money, and yet we are still here. Many of us can see God in our lives when we were paralyzed in our minds with no psychologists and God woke us up this morning in our right minds. And yet, we are still here. Someone can see God in our lives when we were on our deathbed like Lazarus and God called our name and woke us up. And yet, we are still here. I'm sure some graduate listening this morning can see God in your life when you didn't think you could finish school because of money or energy and Jesus whispered in your ear, you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And I'm sure, I'm sure that some father here today, I'm sure that some father figure here today 
some mother or some guardian who worked hard all their lives, who sacrificed everything to do what was right to raise their children or this next generation. I'm sure that you, I'm sure mamas and daddies, I'm sure that you can see that your children can do even greater things because of what you did. I'm sure that you can see the hand of God on your children because you know a God that can do even greater things. They can do even greater things. Our children can do even greater things because they can now redefine the words because they have seen the light of the Lord. They can do even greater things because they have seen the God of their weary years and the God of their silent tears and they prevail in their darkness. Our children can see a God. They can see a God because of looking back at history in this church. If you look at the history of this church and you are standing in here today, you know that we can do even greater things. We can do even greater things. If you look back at June 19th and it talked about the emancipation of our people from enslavement, and you look at the history of this church, how in the world could a group of folk come together and do what was done here? It was because of a Jesus. It was because of a Jesus that showed us that we can do the impossible. It was because of a Jesus that we can do what nobody thought we could do. It was because of a God that did not boast only in what he did, but he even told us that you can do greater things. What kind of God do we serve? Who will leave the heavenly realm and come down, and come down, come down and, and, and manifest himself into humanity, to come into our space and be lowly and humble like one of us. Do even greater things. This God that we serve is like no other God. This God that we serve came, hung on a cross, was resurrected again, showed us that we can be resurrection people. Yes. Nothing can kill us, St. John. Yes. Nothing can kill us because we have a God that came and showed us the power of his Father. It became the greatest image of love that we could ever imagine. Yeah. To the graduates, God can continue to do even greater things in you. Yeah, if you follow the immovable standards of God's true definition of greatness, and this definition is to follow the way, the truth, in the life of Jesus. And I wanna challenge you to all gain all the education and advancement you can get. But I wanna, I wanna suggest and I wanna push you that in all your getting, in all your accolades, in all your advancements, in all your studies, thirst, strive, desire, and ask for wisdom. Thirst, strive, and desire in all your getting to gain wisdom. I challenge you to read, to unread, and reread again your history and gain as much knowledge of who you are and where you came from. Because the stories in the text, young people, the stories in the Bible is a story of a people who God led into freedom. God is also doing the same thing in your lives. Amen. Know who you are. Continue to ask your elders who you are. Get on Ancestry.com and see who you are. Know your history. Know your lineage. Because that is teaching you more about who your authentic self is. That is teaching you that when you go out into this world, God only called you. God only called you. God called you to do what you are going to do. And you are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. You are God's magnus corpus. 
You are the masterpiece of God, but God wants to see you face to face one day. You don't want to see the mask that the world has put on you. God wants to see you face to face and say, well done. Because you and your authenticity, that you in the hands that were created by the Father, by our Heavenly Father, created you to do a work with your own personality. Beloved, understand this, that as you go out into this world, Young people understand this, especially our graduates. If you're going into the workforce, if you're going to higher education, if you're going into grad school, whatever the case may be, that when you go into the world, remember that you are a standard bearer. You are bearing a standard. You are creating an image for those around you. Remember, remember and forget not your community and where you came from. This is the foundation of this community, this church right here. We're praying for you. We're loving on you. We want you to do even greater things than we did. We want you to strive to be greater than even we did. As we go on and gain knowledge and gray hairs and all of our hair, we know that this generation, we are happy and we're excited about this new generation because we know where you stand on continue to stand on the word of god continue to be led by the spirit of god and you're going to be all right and you're going to be all right amen even greater things in jesus name. amen 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 The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. You know, in, in order to, to stand before you and preach, in order to uh, have these thoughts in order for many of us to have the joy that you heard, for many of us to stand up and sing and dance when the music was being played. A lot of that came through things that we have gone through. A lot of that has come from life's experiences. I don't know about you, but I've been through some things. I've been on the crossroads of life and went one way and went the other, but God allowed me to come back. But I realized that even in those days, and I think our young people need to hear this, even when you, you know you're off that path, we have a God that is still with you. He has never forsaken you. But when you come to the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is in your life. And you accept this God in our lives. And you allow him to come in and, and talk with you. You allow him to come in and talk with you and walk with you. He will reveal himself in ways that you would never understand. The Holy Spirit will give you comfort and give you understanding and give you wisdom. But we have to start with accepting who Jesus Christ is. That's one of the reasons you have to know who you are. Because when you get to know who Jesus Christ is, you will realize that the same Jesus walked in the same shoes you walked in. It's good news to know who Jesus is. So we ask right now, if there's anyone who has felt the movement of God in your heart and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can come down the aisle. You can join this church by baptism. You can join this church by letter from another church. You can even join this church as one that just needs watch care, that needs to be a part of a family while they are in a distant land from where they're from. If there's one. 
If there's one, we would just ask that you come. If there are those that want to come but you're online and you're looking at us from social media or Zoom or YouTube or the website here at St. John, and you just can't physically come into the building, just give this church a call. Give us a call at 757-229-0759. Just leave a message and just let us know what your desire is. Even if you go on our website, williamsburgsjbc.org, go to the contact page and you can just write us a, a note. You can email us right there from the, the uh, website. Just let us know. We are ready. These deacons are before us, ready to hold us, hold you and accept you into this house and train and mentor you and nourish you into knowing what the Christian life is. If there's one. If there's one. Amen. Amen. We now turn the service over to our Deacon Chairman, Bernard Payne. Thank you, Reverend Lassiter, for that powerful message. Even greater, even greater. Jesus is the cornerstone of the foundation of Christianity. And we thank God for that. I want to thank the ushers for standing at the doors. I want to thank uh, the young people for their participation in the program this morning. Thank you for stepping up. This is, this is training, pre preparation for what is to come, what God has in store for you, as Reverend Lasseter was saying. I want to thank the graduates for persevering. And thank God for, the, for his faithfulness to the graduates. Amen. Because if it had not been for him, where would we be? Right now, we would like to give uh, Amari Parker the right hand of fellowship. Amen. Come on up, Amari. Amari, St. John Baptist Church welcomes you into the congregation. You have completed your new members orientation and you have met all the requirements to be a, an official member of St. John. Um, Galatians 2, 9, and I would like to present your Bible here. Amari already had his Bible ahead of time. He's been reading his Bible. Continue to stay in your Bible. Read your Bible. It will help you to avoid a lot of problems in life. Yeah. <laughs> if you stay in that Bible and read it, um, you are now ready to go out and tell others and show others about what God has done for you. And we welcome you. Um, Galatians 2, 9 talked about how Paul and Barnabas were given the right hand of fellowship because they were prepared to go out and spread the gospel. God knew that they had the spirit of God in them and they were ready to build the kingdom. And so it's an acceptance into and unity in a congregation of people. Thank you, Amari. Um, at this time, Hold on one second. We would like to give you the right hand of fellowship, which we can just give a fist bump, and I'd like to be the first to give it to you. Um, ask the family to come up and give them also uh, the right hand of fellowship and the deacons and our associate ministers.
Thank you. Thank you, Amari. Let's give Amari another hand. This is Father's Day, and we would like to honor some of the fathers of this church. The following people have reached an awesome age of 90 or over. If you are here, please raise your hand and let everybody know who you are. Brother William Rawls, Brother Theodore Parsons, Brother George Parsons, Trustee Emeritus Clyde King. There we go, Brother King. Brother James Horn. Deacon Brady Graham, who we know is in Florida. Deacon Joseph Edmonds. There he is back there. He's peeking through the door right now. There we go. There he is. <laughs> Trustee Emeritus, Ralph Churchill. And lastly, but not least, the one who is the eldest member of male member of our church, Trustee Pete Coley Sr. <laughs> we thank you for leading us, gentlemen, and we pray all the best in your future. Thank you, Sister Steinberg. This has been a wonderful day, a wonderful morning here at St. John. God is truly blessing us. Um, I ask that you continue to remember the sick and the shut in, remember the poor and the widows. We're here to help others and be a blessing to somebody. Uh, we will have our um, benediction by our Reverend Lassiter. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Payne. Before we leave today, uh, as we come to a close with our benediction, I just want to just highlight something that was real special. Uh, the women of the church, they sat uh, at the doors and they were our ushers today, and we just want to say thank you, especially to Nashe and Shana. Thank you, and it was so good seeing you today. Amen. Sorry, if I don't write it down, I don't remember it. Um, thanks to the technology crew, and thanks also to the women, uh, Women's Fellowship, Christian Fellowship, yesterday who served uh, the Father's Day meal, lunch meal. We had a great time sitting out up under the uh, trees at the picnic table there, eating our meals. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for anybody that I haven't mentioned, the musicians. It takes a lot, it takes a lot, and we're all working together. Amen. Amen, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You have showed yourself to us again, Lord God. Yes. You've allowed us to come in and worship with each other again. You have brought us home again. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We ask that as we leave this place, that you will allow us to go home and fellowship with one another, enjoy one another, and just have good times and memories. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.